March 11th, um, this is addendum to physical medicine rehab secure messaging. In her addendum, she's talking to you, but I don't think she's talking to you in secure messaging. I think she's putting an addendum to her note, assuming that it's sending back to you. And it's Joe, not. Joe, we, we know she's all this. Literally just putting an addendum to it. Yeah, we, we know all this. That's what we were saying. We're not yeah. getting anything. And then, again, there's no way to know those when those show up, and it's always delayed by three to four days. So I don't have access yeah. to notes for, you know, say, say four or five, four days ago. Um, I may get a header that a note started, but it won't post until, one, they complete cl completely uh, close that note out. And then there's an automatic delay of like three or four days already into the system for all that anyways. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, the only thing I can do is we're going to have to train Carol. We're going to have to first reach out to see. Joe, if, um, if it's happening to me from her, it is happening to other veterans. Right. No, I agree with you. If, if, if our theory is correct, if what I'm seeing and what I think is happening is actually true, uh, then I can imagine it's happening to everybody. Yes, sir. And, and it's also what I've been trying to communicate this entire time is I am not being communicated to at all. So, I mean, I mean, again, I think this just further validates what we've been saying. No, I, I mean, it, you know, it is what it is. You're, it, it was a, a situation that um, no one was prepared for, unfortunately. Uh, neither the pain clinic um, staff nor the patient when Dr. Egger left. And um, I think it just led to uh, panic mode and um, it didn't always have the greatest outcome for those involved. So yeah. I hope uh, going forward things will um, go more smoothly for you and we'll able to figure out a, you'll have a plan that works and, um, and care that you feel is addressing your needs. Never prescribe oxycodone for you. No, I never asked her to. Okay. So you, you see the, the challenge is, and again, this is very simple, you know, solution. Wait, wait, hold on. Can you explain what, what the point of that is? I was in pain management. Well, point, why why point, would I? The point of it, the point of it, um, here at the Arbor VA, our primary care physicians are like quarterbacks, and uh, well, she's done. I think that, she's done a terrible job because I've kept her in a loop on all these unethical activities going on, and she's done shit. Matter of fact, she was actually the one who was first aware of the messaging issue, and she did nothing, and that was over a month and a half ago. So. Are we yeah. are we going to rely on this? I mean, and I also have well, the, the reason the reason I'm exploring this uh, option is that uh -huh. uh, you know at this point uh, it appears to me and correct me if I'm wrong. So Dr. Egger resigned. Uh -huh. So we got two pain physicians, Dr. Shuckman. Dr. Shuckman, I think, took over, and I think at some point she did uh, sign prescriptions of oxycodone for you. Correct. Correct, and she also signed on January 28th that we're continuing on with Dr. Edgar's plan. Yeah. So why, when and why did this change occur, and was it, did it occur for a medical reason? So far, yeah. every reason she's put up has been refuted, refuted by other clinics, okay? And then last so, night, and, again, and, and Stephen, please, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I'm not part of, you know, what she did or did not do. I'm simply, again, I'm just a mediator here, mm -hmm. uh, trying to help, you know, Dr. Shuckman and you, because at this point, as of today, you are still 
uh, the patient of Dr. Shuckman. You you mm-hmm. at least have seen her twice. She prescribed you twice. I, I never prescribed medications for you. I only saw you in 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, please, you know, put me into my position. I am... I am here trying to help you, trying to, to help everybody here. What, but the it, challenge is, so if, if Dr. Egger is no longer with us, and Dr. Shuckman, for whatever reasons, and again, this should be the question that she needs to ask, to answer for you, not me. Uh, for whatever reason, she she doesn't feel comfortable prescribing oxycodone. Is that correct? <laughs> no, she's... she. <laughs> She said she's stopping the oxycodone for non-compliance reasons, not medical. Okay. And that's, that's, and, and maybe, I, maybe you don't understand that. Um, she's saying I, she's stopping for non-compliance, not medical reasons. Okay. And, yeah. and myself, along with several other clinics, namely like mental health, have corrected her on all her non-compliance issues she brought up, all right? Yeah. So we corrected yeah. her about that. So again, not medical reasons, but it was compliance reasons she was changing the program. Yeah. Okay, so, so Steve, let me ask you this. So, okay, so she, let's let just not analyze whether, you know, she, she, she did it rightfully or wrongfully. So well, the bottom line is she's just, not willing to prescribe. So my next question is what's next, right? So again, she is not prescribing. What's next? You've got you've got literally a few options here. In my opinion, I, I think I already know that you filed a complaint with the chief of staff. You also filed a complaint with the congressman. Uh-huh. I think that is your decision. I I can only support you in that. I, I think you know as a patient you're entitled to that. But then again, the the question comes: What's next? Right again. So what's next? You file the complaint, but what's next? You're the patient. You're in pain. You want oxycodone. So um, at this point, I see again. If you ask me as a as a pain provider, and I think previously you mentioned, and I appreciate that that you truly believe that I care, and I do. So if you really want, um, I think it's very simple. You need to find a physician. It doesn't need to be a doctor Katragata a physician, and um, who is willing to prescribe your oxycodone. Now, I will tell you my personal, and if you want, I will document this in the chart, uh, that I have since things can potentially have gotten worse. Um, but, but again, it, it's your, it, it's absolutely your decision. You're entitled to it. You can escalate this to the to the you know um, office of chief of staff and congressman, I I, I respect that, um, but but that that's essentially my suggestion. My suggestion is you need to find a physician. If Dr. Katragata, because I already told you here at the Narbavia, our primary care is is excellent. They uh, you know they do a lot of stuff, and uh, when somebody leaves, a lot of times they they take over. Now, if it's going to be a challenge for Dr. Katragata to assume the new regimen, not new regimen, but the regimen you were previously on, um, you know, then, again, that's why I carefully use things I can't, is just basically say, you know, Steve needs to be continued on oxycodone uh, three times a day, uh, the, the regimen that he was with Dr. Egger with. Um, now, like I said, the, the second option is, we can certainly seek an opinion from um, from you know another VA as a you know as a as a second opinion kind of situation, and I think Dr. Deponio is very open uh, to 